this year in August I crossed the Panama Canal with my sailboat Carl and I keep on reading questions about how is the procedure of crossing the canal without an agent, how much does it cost, this and that. So I decided to do this little short video to give you a checklist on the things that you need to go through in my experience of how the transit went when I did it. All the details like phone numbers, emails, what kind of forms you need to fill out, you can find in the link to one of my blog posts below in the description of the video. Alright, let's get started. In part one we talked about how you register your boat in the system, how to make an appointment for the measurement. We went through the procedure of getting measured and filling out all the necessary forms. We talked about how to deposit the money to get your transit date and how to organize your lines, fenders and line handlers. Now once that is all set up, make sure that you call the scheduler's office uh, a day before your transit. Just make sure that your transit is really happening and ask at what time you have to be at the flats. That's the area outside Shelter Bay. There's like four um, yellow buoys and you have to anchor there and then your advisor will come. Usually they come a little later, like three or four. Ours was pretty much in time at two. And they'll drop the advisor off on your boat and then he'll tell you what to do from there. It's pretty nice because the advisor is basically taking over your boat so they really know what's going on. They really know, you know, where you have to go, what speed, you know, if you should wait or if you should go faster. Some of them are really nice. We had, we were really lucky the first day we had one. He was really, he was really funny. He was like asking us all these joke questions and he was really interested and he thought it was pretty awesome that there's a woman running the boat and my first mate, she's also a woman. So he was like, whoa, this is really cool. I have, I don't have this very often. Uh, make sure you have enough food for everyone, of course, and enough drinks, keep everyone happy. And then what you do, the procedure is the first day, basically you go um, up the, th the first three locks. It's three locks going up and three locks going down. So the first day you go through the first uh, set of three and then once you're out, you're on the Gatun Lake. And usually in the old days, you'll just go a little bit uh, to port and there would be like two massive uh, red boys and you just hook up to those. Now since there's the new locks on the port side, they don't really want you to cross anymore and sometimes they'll, they'll make you anchor, which you, if you can try to avoid it because there's a lot of stuff on the bottom and I've heard that lots of people got tangled up with their anchors. Well then, whatever you do, if you hook up to the buoy or if you drop anchor, the pilot boat will come and pick up the agent because the agent is actually not going to stay in your boat for the night. And then, you know, you have dinner, drinks, whatever, have a great time. And then the next morning, between 6 and 8, the new agent will be dropped off at your boat. And then off you go. You actually travel quite a while. It's, um, I think, about 20 miles that you have to go. And then you'll reach the, the second set of three locks going down again. For us, the only time that was a little bit tricky, and I heard that is... Um, Usually the case is when we we're going down and we had a boat coming in from behind because if you are in the front and then another boat comes in, they push all the water in and then you'll get so much current that your boat will really get swung around and the line handlers that are actually to the side, they really have to know what they're doing. They have to be fast, you know, not have their hands in there. They need to be able to, to have a really good fast reaction so uh, you don't swing into the walls of, of the locks. Just make sure you, you keep on asking, well, is there anything we need to know about this lock or anything to, about this lock? Because, funnily enough, there was this one situation where we were breaking out because the boat was coming in. And um, I, I had asked him once or twice, like, is there anything we need to know? But he didn't say anything. And then afterwards, after the situation had cleared a little bit, we again said, like, well, so is this very usual that it happens? He's like, yeah, that happens all the time. And I was like, okay. So... You know, be aware you ask enough, even if you have the feeling you're over asking, it's always good to poke around a little bit so you get the information that you need. Now then the gates into the Pacific open and obviously that's the time to just totally freak out and um, be happy and think how awesome it is that you just from, uh, crossed from one ocean into the other. From there you travel on a little bit further, you drop off the advisor at the Balboa Yacht Club. And, well, then you do whatever you have to do. You anchor in Flamenco or La Playita. And then the next day, the guy that rented you the lines and tires will come and pick them up. And, of course, you need to take care and get your line handlers back to land. But then you're done with the passage. You can just enjoy the new ocean. 
Then the only thing that's left to do is you need to make sure you get your deposit of $900 back. Now I have heard that people have had trouble with it and they didn't get it back or something. I have to say I didn't have any trouble getting it back. It took a long time. I, I thought it was going to take two weeks because that's what I heard. It took longer than that. It took uh, a whole month to get it back. But I did call. I, there's actually a special accounting office, uh, the number you can find below. And if you, if you call them and you give them your identification number, remember that little thing that you're not supposed to lose. So give them that and then they can look you up in the system. And when I called, actually, she was like, yeah, actually, you know what? The money just went out today. And it was true. The money arrived uh, the next day and everything was cool. Now, this is the only thing where people say maybe it does make sense to take an agent. I myself did not have any problems, so I can't really say anything about that because... If you do take an agent, it will cost you another three hundred fifty to five hundred dollars. He'll take care of all, you know, all the calling, all the organization, um, and you won't have to do the the deposit of the nine hundred dollars. Some people feel uncomfortable running around with a lot of cash, or they're afraid of losing the money because it doesn't get sent back. As I said, I did not have any negative experience with it, and I was happy to save that um, amount of money. But that is probably the only thing to consider why one might want to you know not, not take the risk of losing the money apart from that risk of losing the deposit i don't think there's any reason to take an agent all the people that i dealt with they spoke really good english most of them were really super friendly it really isn't that much to do and if you have a list that you can tick off you have all the numbers then i think it's just uh for me not worth it to spend the money on an agent but, you know, everyone's got their own comfort zones and um, their own preferences and their own financial situation. So, you know, this is just, as I said, just me. Well, that's that's about it. It was a really exciting journey. I enjoyed it a lot. I had really beautiful people on board. I was really lucky to have, you know, great line handlers and friends over there for the passage. And I can only say it was uh, an exciting little voyage between two oceans for sure. And for any one of you that is planning to go through, I wish you good luck. And if you have any more questions, just comment below. I'll get back to you. Safe travels.